Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is a beautiful March 15th, Monday afternoon. Coming up on this episode of the Krusty Connect podcast, batteries are sexy. The Trudeau government's recent announcement of $180 million going to a Quebec company to make batteries, $400 million to make bike paths, and more BS on the Wii scandal. Stick around. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. Yes, sir. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast, a Canadian veteran's point of view on political, social, economic issues, and life. Here's Krusty. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, March 15th, Monday afternoon. Batteries are sexy is the title of today's episode. And remember, listener discretion is advised. And if you like and hear what you see, by all means, please click like and subscribe and share this around. Help us independent folk with the algorithm. And please consider subscribing today too. help me reach the 10,000 mark on my YouTube channel. So carrying on, batteries are sexy. Millions of dollars going to La Belle Provence and more millions of dollars being spent on bike pass. Well, we'll start with the announcement today. Pierre, or not Pierre, the faux pas. Mr. Trudeau, potato puppet himself, negotiating a deal with uh, Quebec's premier in regards to building a factory to uh, provide batteries for vehicles, i.e. buses, bigger commercial vehicles. Who knows exactly, but to sum it all up, it's basically battery manufacturing to get uh, our net zero commitment by the year 2050. Great, so 180 million bucks going to a business to build up more business in Quebec. Now, I'm not trying to diss Quebec. I'm not dissing any province for that matter. I diss some of the leadership and the mentality that goes with some of these provinces, but I have worked with a lot of Quebecers throughout my military career, and some of them are great friends of mine. So I'm not dissing La Belle Provence. I am going to diss la personne that are in charge. I'm going to diss the whole thing where every time something new and innovative comes to this country, it's almost like we have to ask certain Quebecers our permission to go ahead and do it. Now, with all the money that has been spent on other nations, the billions that have been invested in so-called gender budgets and carbon budgets and green-based budgets and all these budgets, 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 budgets over and over again. When are we going to see the light for Canada's budget, our national budget? That's my question, Okay. We have all this money to give around to this group and that group, but enough money for our seniors, not enough money for our veterans, definitely not enough money to actually improve clean water conditions Canada-wide. And I'm not just saying for the First Nations, I'm saying Canada-wide. Okay? So the federal government's going to invest money into a Quebec company yet again, or to build uh, some Quebecers, to build a company, to create these batteries that are going to help us with our carbon footprint for years to come. Now, Canada sits, I think, 1.5 or 1.6 of the contribution to uh, carbon-based gases and stuff for greenhouse emissions, all that good stuff. Whatever the science was at that time or whatever it still is now, because we both know they're moving the goalpost yet again when it comes to anything productive in this country. Okay? Now, I've said numerous times in episodes before, ladies and gentlemen, let's innovate. Let's find something that can work. Let's fucking, fucking find something that's going to help us create a better life without impacting the environment. But when you concentrate all your energy on one idea, i.e. like batteries, there's a problem because people forget that in Canada, winter, it can be anywhere from four months to six or seven months. Okay. And with winter and icy conditions, you have a lot of salt and a lot of sand put in highways. Now, how does salt and sand work with the finer components of a battery? Okay. You can look at how where batteries sit in your own personal vehicle. They usually sit on top, kind of out of the way from any kind of uh, sediment kicking up from the roads, right? You know, you could build your vehicles like dinky cars, have one big cover in the bottom, and then you'll get no kick up or any kind of uh, stuff coming in your undercarriages, what have you. But batteries are put there for a reason. Now, if you have one giant vehicle that runs on a giant battery, regardless of how you seal it or deal it or not, the elements are still going to get inside one way or the other. That's my logic, honestly. 
Now, I'm not disenfranchising the hope of a giant battery that's going to run your vehicle or run your home. That's a great fucking idea. But how is that going to get done? How is that going to be made? Just one little company in Belle Provence? You can't provide companies all over Canada to do the same thing too? I understand the manufacturing hub is, is going through a world of a time, but so are the natural resources hubs in this side of the country as well too. Quebec is not the only province that's been hurting for something. You've got fishing issues in Nova Scotia yet again. You've, you've got manufacturing issues in Ontario, uh, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and natural resource issues happening in Alberta, Saskatchewan, and BC as we speak. And yet, of course, Mr. Potato Sock Puppet, yes, is constantly worrying about his handful of votes in La Belle Provence and in Ontario, respectively. Okay? And not to mention the idea that uh, Miss McKenna come up with, you know, uh, Barbie the Builder now, and I don't really give a shit if she's offended by that term or not. $400 million being invested in fucking bicycle paths. Really? Right? So why does it cost $180 million to create a company or to help build a company that's going to make batteries for vehicles, and yet it costs $400 million bucks for a fucking bicycle path in any major city? Really? Well, what are these paths made out of? Estrogen? Are, are they, are they hormone-based? Are they plant-based? Asphalt-based? Gee, where's asphalt come from? Oh, yeah. Petroleum. Oh, what a great idea. <clears throat> but $400 million bucks it, it's going to cost to make that, so they project. And I'll leave a link in the description there, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for you to uh, read and decide at your will. But see, it's getting to a point where this federal government really has no fucking clue how to boost the economy again. Now, they can sit there and say, oh, green economy is going to help this, and we're going to boost the economy by doing things green, 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 by one little company here and one little company there, and pick and choose who your friends are, and pick your nose, pick your friend's nose, and do your friends here, do your friends there. Just one big happy love in. Meanwhile, you're screwing the majority of the nation over, Okay. Now, there are ways out there we can still extract our fuel, our fossil fuels, regardless of what people on the fence like to sit and think about, whether they're driving a Prius or driving their bicycles on the new bike path brought to you by Miss McKenna. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, and mind you, I digress. But still, what other innovations are laid on the table for us, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah, batteries are sexy. The idea of a battery being very, very energy efficient for all your daily needs is a great fucking idea. But what goes into making said battery? As far as we know, lithium. Lithium, bit of copper, a little bit of magnesium, what have you. You know, uh, I, I forget my basic uh, grade 10, let's take apart a battery class. <laughs> I know we did it in high school, right? And I did a bit of Duracell batteries when I worked there too. Different layers, different components, and all that to contain the energy to run your Walkman, your DVD players, your CD players all the time, your toys, your machines. Right now, it's used for flashlights and other electronic devices like your remote. Um, but you want to make that bigger to run your vehicles and your home. So be it. Where's the incentive for the Canadian taxpayer to do something on their own with that? No, no, no. Let's, let's invest in a company that's going to have its government kickbacks too. And said company, let's say if they get into financial need, in the next two or three years, kind of like Bombardier and other Quebec core and other Quebec companies alike, asking the government for a bailout in case the economy goes to shit, right? So w w what's the bigger picture of this here too? No money for proper drinking water, no money for seniors, no money for vets, no money to keep things on the go in this country as these elected officials should, but there's plenty to hand out for the idea and the notions of virtue, okay? So I can smell election in the works. They're only doing this to win votes, ladies and gentlemen. Really, that's all there is doing. They're only doing this to win fucking votes. And that's what it is. If they truly cared about the environmental impact that's happening in this country, they would spend more time worrying about the actual trees and the rivers. They would spend more time uh, allowing innovations to come forward. Innovators. Innovators of all colors and creeds to come forward and suggest something. But no, they have to pick and choose based on voter populace, based on what is popular and they decide what's popular of course because they always pull these polls out of their asses right you yeah. here's a magic poll oh this poll says we'll do this and this poll says we'll do that well i never seen a poll what say you stay updated and follow crusty canuck on facebook twitter gab telegram youtube and podbean subscribe today and donate at crustycanuck.ca Yes, and carrying on, too, please uh, consider donating if you can there, ladies and gentlemen. You can find me 
crustyconnect.ca. I have a PayPal link and a Buy Me a Coffee link. Please contribute. I'd like to make this a full-time commitment, but it takes listeners and viewers such as yourself to make that happen. So please consider donating today. It doesn't matter what you donate. One dollar, two dollars, three dollars, four dollars, five, whatever you like to do. One lump sum or on a monthly basis. You can also join me on my YouTube page and join the page there for $1.99 a month. You get to hear my lovely voice, see me on live streams, and receive proper accolades every time you contribute. So something to think about. And I have different tiers to choose from as well and prizes and maybe another giveaway on its way. So please consider donating to the Krusty Canuck podcast today. Anyway, carrying on with more batteries are sexy. Yeah, they can be sexy. They can be very appealing. You know, uh, I remember the military, uh, how many times I went through batteries, my flashlights uh, for my accoutrements and stuff, all that good stuff. And they come in handy and they're, they're, they are, you can learn how to build a fire from a certain battery. You can do wonderful things with a battery. And just imagine if you can amplify the power of one little cell into something that can run your home and run your car, that'd be perfect. That'd be a fantastic idea. All right. The thing being, everybody's got to make their chunk of coin with that too. All right. Everybody's got to make their chunk. And the government, of course, has to get hit, say, and it's dirty fucking hands in it as well, too. Right? So they're, they're deciding who's going to innovate and who's not going to innovate in this country again. Right? That liberal model failed back in Ontario many moons ago when you had Miss Kathleen Wynne there calling the shots on the Green Deal and the Green Ideas and all that kind of stuff. Instead of actually helping the Canadian taxpayer or the Ontario taxpayer, they turned around and tripled their hydro costs, all in the name of, we're going to stop our carbon footprint. Oh, Look what we're doing. We're robbing people blind. People are going bankrupt. But that's okay. There's a story that Rex TV put on there uh, today. Uh, he talked to uh, Jocelyn. i got to forget her name. Anyway, I'll, I'll put the links to my description. Anyway, she's a real honcho when it comes to Canadian manufacturing and entrepreneurship. And she gave us all a schematic on how much money is being spent in the name of carbon tax and protecting us from the evil carbon. You know, the stuff that feeds our plants and shit every day. And it's ridiculous what farmers are going through too. The amount of money they have to spend just to dry their grain for using you know, propane and other fuels to keep their product dry. Because we all know what happens when you, uh, you, know, you give moldy grain to an animal. You know, it bloats and it gets sick and it fucking dies. But you know, we're protecting the environment, so therefore it's justified, right? <clears throat> Wrong. Okay? There's no such thing as taxing people into prosperity. Okay? There's no such thing as it. You, you can't tax into fucking prosperity because the more you tax, the more the government spends. It's that simple. Let's spend, 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 spending, 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 spending. Let's keep spending, right? And then can't, we can't figure out why people aren't going to work. Oh, that's right. There, there's, there's a pandemic going on. So while a pandemic is going on, you're telling certain businesses and telling certain people what jobs are essential, what not are essential, and all this money spent on PP&E and so-called research based on expertise in regards to keeping you safe, while these experts just still get making uh, quite, a, quite a, bit, uh, a bit of money, and politicians make quite a bit of money while people are going broke. Fairness and equality, my ass. Anyway, here's a word from my sponsors. This is Brian Boucher, the new CEO of Canad Gold Corp. We have gold at 99% purity with discounts ranging from $100 up to $200 off the ounce. This is the right place to buy, from 2 gram cards to 400 ounce bricks. We have any quantity of gold you are looking for. We also sell by the ton, not like your ex-wife. Visit us today at canadgold.com, C-A-N-U-N-D, gold.com. Well, smack my ass and call me Judy. In October of 2015, Lindsay Robbins, like many of her fellow Canadians, was struggling with the turmoil of mental illness. The ups and downs of what she was going through was shaping her realities, and she longed for structure. As luck would have it, <coughs> structure presented itself to her in the form of gardening. And through gardening, Lindsay had an awakening that led her to create produce for heroes. Lindsay realized that our veterans were going through their own mental struggles, and through her own experience, she realized the power of community. By desiring to help the way that she had been helped, she has created a program that provides relief to veterans. Her food program, which aims to provide veterans and their families relief from the stresses of food insecurity and help alleviate the cost of living for those that have sacrificed so much for their country. Whether it's through directly contacting Produce for Heroes or through a friend's referral, all veterans and their families living in Canada are welcome. By shining a light on the struggle of veterans and their families, 
Lindsay is hoping to get her fellow Canadians to hop on board and support Produce for Heroes and our great veterans. If you or a veteran you know needs help, ProduceForHeroes.com is a great place to start. Yes, and you can reach Brian and Scott at CanonGold.com and Lindsay at Produce for Heroes. Links will be in the description under the heading Sponsors. And if there's anyone out there listening who would like to advertise their product or their service on my show, please give me an email. So let me know, CrustyBCanuck67 at gmail.com. Uh, my prices are relatively reasonable. I'm not here to gouge anybody. But like I said, I want to make this a full-time commitment, and I need viewers and people such as yourselves out there to give me a hand by donating today. So carrying on, more about sexy batteries and government spending. Yes, batteries are sexy, according to Justin Trudeau. Just the way that shitty ingredient in his face this morning in regards to that uh, whole story. My wife and I were watching it, had a bit of a chuckle. We just didn't really buy it because uh, they've suggested the whole battery power thing back in the late 80s, early 90s. And there was always a, uh, you know excuse, well, materials and getting raw materials here and moving this here and moving that there. And yet you could put people to work. But we all know a lot of third world nations love digging up lithium under lock and key and the power of a gun uh, to save their virtue of, of Western leaders and people of the Great Reset and all these great know-it-alls with the globalist agenda. So my question to you is, ladies and gentlemen, how about we innovate ourselves? Okay. There are kits you can go online. You can go online and buy personal wind power, personal battery power for your home, for your trailer, for your domicile, wherever you live, where you can generate your own electricity and have enough left over to share with your neighbors if you want to or charge a reasonable price. Yeah, why isn't there government innovation for that? Self-sufficiency, because you're self-sufficient, then you don't need big government, and big government doesn't get the part of your fucking monopoly, right? That's why we have land taxes and water taxes and fuel taxes. Taxes, taxes, taxes are excellent, yes. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Yeah, well, of course, to our government, taxes are the government's best friend because they have no other revenue except ripping off from uh, Peter to pay Paul and then borrow from Paul to give to, to Beth, and Beth has to sit there and sell herself short for a buck and a quarter. So what's that tell you? Yeah, progress, right? And coming up later in the show, too, I have another Polar Vortex Award for a certain writer out of the Los Angeles Times. Thanks to uh, Dr. Gad Sad for putting this article on his Facebook page. I, had, I read it, and it was quite a chuckle, but that'll be coming up momentarily. But again, carrying on with more of the uh, batteries are sexy. That's right. How the government still fails to look after Canada as a whole and rather just pick his, choose his, you know, people he wants to help rather than helping the whole nation right uh, i tell you stay updated and follow crusty canuck on facebook twitter gab telegram youtube and podbean subscribe today and donate at crusty see what annoys me the most though too is that they're all so worried about the environment and these are all people that believe that the world's going to end in 12 years if we don't do something and creating all these little kids like Greta Turnberg and other little nations protesting uh, climate uh, problems and what have you. Now, we as a species, yeah, we contribute to it. I get it. And there, I, I agree. There is some climate change out there. But maybe it's because the world is changing. Okay? Maybe it's because the amount of people we have and the things we do, things might get a bit warmer and maybe a bit colder. I can tell you this winter was, was nasty. What say you, Alberta, <laughs> Saskatchewan, Manitoba? In fact, what say you, Canada? And to my American listeners in the United States, yeah, pretty damn fucking cold. That's winter, <laughs> regardless of how you dress it up. In the Northern Hemisphere, it's called winter, okay? Texas got one hell of a blast, hell of a reminder, but that happens too. And there are some weather phenomenons that, that have happened out there. I remember my mother when she was alive telling me stories of how she witnessed seeing a bit of snow in June one year. Okay. So I'm not too worried about the weather changing. I'm not too worried about climate change. Polar bears are doing okay. A lot of our uh, natural resources and little critters out there are doing just fine. You know, I get worried when they come up with these ideas about culling and what have you. That's where I get a little concerned where things have to be balanced. You know, you should have an amount of, a certain amount of wolves for an, an overabundance of deer or a certain amount of wolves for too much elk or a few bears extra for this population, what have you. It's about balancing the ecology properly without worrying about any kind of fucking profit margin. Now, I know Greta talked about that, 
But the thing being, we all know carbon tax is a profit margin for the big wigs. It has nothing to do with you or me. So whether you're a puppet for this monstrosity or a spokesperson for that monstrosity, it's, it's a shit show. You're not going to fucking tax away the weather and cover the asses of politicians that want to keep spending Canadian tax dollars on stupid things. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, gender-based budgets, green-based budgets, you know, poop-based budgets, you name it. How about a budget to can it back on track again? You know, open up the pipelines. Let's get the oil flowing. Let's take a look at our lumber industry and do it right. Let's take a look at our fishing industries and do it right. Okay? Standing up for our fisheries, all fisheries, Canadian and Indigenous alike, all of them. Balancing out properly, promoting proper fairness and equality. Right? Instead of worrying about what's, who's this color and who stands there and what, what group this is and what group that is. Start wearing those Canadians as a whole, all shapes and sizes. You know, that's been suggested before, all the way from Diefenbaker to John Turner to Joe Clark, Mulrooney, hell, even Pierre Elliott Trudeau even said a kind word or two. But what are we getting into right now, right? More divide, more division, you know, more segregation, right? Hell, my last episode, the Prime Minister had the audacity saying Parliament's racist, right? And Why? Just to, uh, to sell a talking point, basically. Join the Liberal Party of Canada. We'll tell you what to think, what to do, how to wipe, how to pick your nose, all in the name of safety. And how much safety is being provided? Really? You know, we have all this money, apparently, we can just give away to this company, this group, uh, this foreign national, that foreign national this so-called marginalized bunch of individuals, and yet we can't look after our own resources. Why is that? Right? It's because Klaus Schwab doesn't want us to own anything. Jawohl. Yeah? You will own nothing and be happy. You will eat 3D printed meat, and you will like this and like that. Jawohl. I should wear my uniform. Mm. Takes me back to my youth. Jawohl. Yeah. Something to think about, folks. Tell me what you think. Krusty B. Canuck 67 at at gmail.com. Like I say, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, and social. Pay attention to my community page too for updates on upcoming interviews and videos that are coming your way. And like I say, if you like and hear what you see, please click the notification bell on the YouTube and please subscribe. Pass this around. Encourage more of your friends and listeners out there to subscribe as well. Help me reach 10,000 plus subscribers on YouTube and uh, help a guy out, right? And if you want to buy some Krusty Connect swagger, please feel free to. Customizegirl.com forward slash small s forward slash Krusty Connect. I've got t-shirts, mugs, hats, swimsuits, underwear, you name it. Check out, get yourself some Krusty Connect swagger today, and I'll leave a link in the description for you to purchase. And pay attention to my community page, too, for updates when it comes to certain deals and certain benefits out there. Anyway, carrying on with more of the batteries are... Sexy. Like I said, batteries can be sexy. But you know what? To me, what, what's really appealing to me is that when you see the young, younger generation come up with innovative ideas, my generation too, for that matter, innovations, where you can actually table innovations and have them seriously considered for the sake of the greater good, meaning that uh, so-and-so who invented said product can get rich and people who use it and sell it can get rich to create a stable economy. Ooh, well, putting people to work. What a great fucking idea. Fantastic. Hey, eh? But no, we don't see these innovations tabled because they don't uh, promote a certain narrative, right? They don't promote the so-called narrative of today when it comes to racism and bigotry. Oh, no, because every time uh, a white person says something, that's racist. Every time uh, a white person of this says something, it's racist or it's misogynist. <coughs> Which brings me to my point to Bill Burr, I guess, uh, is in a bit of trouble now because of his comments at the Grammy Awards there last night. Uh, whoop de fucking do. You know, I look at Bill Burr as a great comedian. Funny as hell. You know, blue-collar guy, common-sense approach. The man's full of pragmatism. The man's married to a black lady. So it, it's not like he's a bigot. He's not racist. <laughs> Obviously, he's not racist. You know, come on. And, of course, people are outraging because he made a comment about being a cis male presenting uh, uh, the Latina uh, category for the Grammy Awards. Now, apparently, 
all these award shows the past two or three years have gone down in ratings because of the whole woke BS and this whole anti this and anti that. And every one of them gets on stage and does a presentation of the political stance and how they virtue and how important and special they are. And yet they promote garbage fucking music, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Now I saw some footage of the whole WAP thing, Cardi B's breakout hit about her wet ass pussy. Well, doesn't take much talent to describe your orifices, right? <laughs> They'll cancel Pepe Le Pew. They'll cancel Elmer Fudd, right? They will try to uh, cancel a few books of the Dr. Zeus library because it's deemed inappropriate and unfair. And yet, here's a manufactured woman who's probably had more Botox than Botox itself, who's an ex-stripper who bragged about ripping people off, who sounds like a real whiny child, you know, because you see her in that last Uber Eats commercial with uh, Mike Myers and Anna Carvey as Wayne and Garth from SNL's uh, Wayne's World, you know, saying the magic words, yeah, eat local. And then here she is winning a Grammy, gyrating in a silver suit, you know, playing on a mattress with her friend, talking about her wet-ass pussy. Talent, eh? Now, I know every generation's had its gap when it comes to music and the arts and all that, and every generation's dissed the other generation in regards to this band or that band. I remember my parents used to tell me how some of my favorite punk bands just didn't measure up to their bands, like Led Zeppelin, the Beatles, what have you, and how some of my punk bands don't measure up to uh, punk bands of the past 10 years. But needless to say, there's always that little rivalry. But when I look at music now and see the entertainment that's presented to us on mass now, I just shake my fucking head and just go, oh, this is fucking terrible, right? How is it so empowering and, and wonderful for a certain female to sit there and talk about her orifice and give an accolades for that, and yet you want to ban a cartoon? I don't know. I don't see the contrast in that. But I guess Bill Burr got in trouble for standing up and doing his thing, his, his usual shtick. And all the power to you, Bill. If by any chance you're listening to this podcast, all the power to you. You just keep doing your fucking thing, man. You got a lot of fans here in, in the crazy north. Us Canucks, we love you. I love you. So you just fucking carry on. Don't worry about the haters. Fuck them. They can kiss my royal ass. Anyhow, like I said, as I said earlier in regards to the Canadian polar vortex of bullshit, a little award I like to give every episode to something I've seen or something I've read or to a leader or a so-called know-it-all that thinks they have it together. Uh, there's an article in the LA Times that I'll present here in a moment. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at krustycanuck.ca. Yes, and carrying on there, ladies and gentlemen, in regards to this, <laughs> this really ridiculous story. Found it up here. Dr. Gad Sad, uh, one of Canada's favorite sons, put this up on his Facebook page. And I looked at it there this morning, and I just gave it a bit of a read, and I really gave it a good chuckle, too. So I'll read some of it for you. This comes from the Los Angeles Times, and I'll leave it in my description here, too. Uh, this was written by a uh, Miss Victoria Hernandez on March 13th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. And the heading of the article is hiking has a diversity problem. These BIPOC groups are working to fix it. Longtime oppression and historical barriers have kept many people of color from feeling comfortable in the American outdoors. Now that, that now that may be changing groups in Southern California and around the nation have made it their goal to introduce people of color to nature in a positive way. Their mission is to remove barriers and to help people experience the connection, whether they are seeking fitness, healing, personal accomplishment, or knowledge of all about the outdoors has to offer. For many, the first step is going on a hike. Here are the groups working towards more a diverse outdoors. Latino Outdoors, Christian Lamont, program manager of Latino Outdoors, a national organization with Los Angeles chapter, calls the process of removing barriers the hike before the hike. The idea is that people of color see themselves represented on the trail. Okay, you know, I'm not going to read any more of this. I'll let you read it, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, what I got out of that, those couple of paragraphs already, it's like, are, are you telling people of different nationalities that they, they have no idea what's out, out of their own door? I'm sure that every Chinese-American, Korean-American, Black-American, Latino-American, 
uh, Eastern European American, Middle Eastern American, et cetera, et cetera, has the common knowledge that if they want to take a walk outside, I'm pretty sure they can. And they don't need special groups representations to do it. Now, I've worked with a, a, a variety of people in my career in the military. And uh, they had the incentive to do what's right in and out of uniform, regardless of what their nationality was. Now, if you have to sit there and constantly promote things like walking, going outside and taking a hike, oh, it needs representation. How does it need representation? Are you going to set together certain parks just for certain groups of people? Wouldn't that be segregation? Are you going to set up certain groups for certain groups of people so they know they can go outside? Is that a, a BIPOC thing? Or is that just an ignorance thing? It just goes to prove that ignorance comes in all shapes and colors, ladies and gentlemen. So, the Canadian Polar Vortex Award for this episode, episode 107 of the Crusty Neck Podcast, goes to Miss Victoria Hernandez for writing such garbage. Honestly. All right? Again, more, more fucking disingenuine journalists, more disingenuine people. It's got to be something in California water or something in North American water that's turning these all these people into morons. And I don't care. You can be a moron in any color or creed, ladies and gentlemen. There's, there's times I've done things that are moronic too. You know, I kind of confessed to that there in my last episode. But... Uh, <laughs> Like, you just can't go out for a hike anymore without being fucking political. You can't enjoy a sport anymore without being political. You, you, you can't just be yourself. I've said numerous times, ladies and gentlemen, it's okay to be you. I don't care where you're from. I don't care what you do. I don't care where you walk or talk. Do it well. Live your life the best of your ability. Just don't hit people and take their stuff. And that also includes don't hit people and take their bullshit either, too. So, without further ado, the magical... The Canadian Polar... Vortex of bullshit. The award goes to the writer of this article, Miss Victoria Hernandez. So, by a chance, Miss Victoria Hernandez, if you're listening to this podcast from the great north of Canada, you just got yourself an award. This has been the Canadian Polar Vortex of bullshit. Yeah, congratulations, Victoria. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, I'll leave this link in the uh, description. You can read it. If you choose to or not to, but I don't know. I just, I'm not impressed. Again, <clears throat> a simple thing like going for a hike now is racialized or it's marginalized or it's, it's not proving to be representative enough, right? I'm not speaking for uh, the Latino population here in Canada. I'm not speaking for any, any diverse group of individuals, but I know enough that if I want to go for a fucking hike, I'm sure I could. And I'm sure that any able-bodied person out there or any unable body person. It doesn't matter if you're in a wheelchair, if you have a crutch or whatever disability. I'm sure if you want to go outside, you've bloody got the means to go outside. I don't know. I just... <laughs> I still shake my head at this shit. Oh, my God. Anyway, carrying on with more of the batteries are sexy. Like I mentioned, suggestions. Like I mentioned, possibilities. Why is there not incentive for people such as myself, yourself, every working class Canadian out there to get out there and to uh, incentivize how to create power and heat and hydro for your own domicile, right? No, of course not, because like I mentioned, government monopoly, right? They got to have their hand in it and saying it too. And what better way to control that by garnishing one company or maybe two companies in one part of the country to dictate terms to everybody else? It's the same old rhetoric. Doesn't matter if it's conservative, liberal, NDP, or Greens. Just more bullshit, ladies and gentlemen. Like, really? Fuck, enough is enough. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. I can honestly say, though, as a member of the Veterans Coalition Party, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn here or trying to be virtuous, you know, but uh, if the federal government's starting to give away hints and plugging points to the next federal election, well, here's some of my plugging points. Okay, I'm representing the Battle River Crowfoot riding here in Alberta. And in my constituents listening right now, okay, I, John Irwin, am going to run for the VCP banner. And my concern is for the constituents. I want to see people get back to work. I want to see people stop living in fear. 
I want to see farmers able to drive their product and bring the product to market and to make a good profit so they can keep the farms running, right? So they can put their kids through school or have a staff and give people a proper living wage. None of this uh, demanding 15 bucks an hour uh, BS so you can misspell uh, a few warning labels. I'm talking a good, honest living wage for people to do, people to live on. I'm also talking common sense when it comes to taxes in this country too. I'm also talking common sense when it comes to cutting some pay from MPs and MLAs alike and MPPs, what have you. Okay? I'm willing to do the hard work to get there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm willing to represent Canadians. And not only uh, because I think of myself as a fifth straight white male, but no, as a Canadian. As an individual who took it upon himself to volunteer his time in the military, because at the time I did need a job. School was out of reach. I wasn't getting too much support from people. Right? So I made a decision to serve my country, learn something, and get paid for it. But during that journey, I understood the caliber of actually volunteering your time and effort for others and stepping up the plate and owning your shit. However, we're not seeing that example here in this country. We're seeing lies, especially with the wee scandal. And I'll leave a link to that too. Uh, the Kilbiger brothers doing their whole fucking word salad thing, just like Miss McKenna did about the whole bicycle trail thing, right? Well, you know, we got to remember too, we can't call these female politicians names because that's misogynistic and sexist. Heaven forbid if they actually take account for their actions. Oh no, can't have that, right? Can't criticize any of our leaders' actions because, oh no, no, they're doing the best they can with your money. Something to think about, folks, because like I mentioned earlier, the Trudeau government and his cronies and, and allies alike are just looking at buttering up a shit sandwich for the next election. Here, we'll promise this, we'll promise that, and hopefully get some brownie points for that area of Montreal that will definitely vote liberal because of progress and creating jobs in the Belle Provence while taking away jobs and opportunities from the rest of the country, right? While not investing in other parts of our nation, while not investing in our natural resources and other manufacturing capabilities, right? They're trying to win votes for the populace. And really, it, it speaks for itself, Right? Canada's dense population is within Ontario and Quebec, and okay. So much for first past the post. Then well, again, what do I know, right? I'm just some cranky veteran. I'm just some crusty Canuck. Anyhow, folks, if you like and hear what you see, please click like and subscribe. Share this around. Help me reach 10,000 subscribers on the YouTube. And a funny thing I noticed the other day, too, I was going through my subscriptions, and I noticed uh, one day I had 1,218 views on one video. And then this morning, I look, and it's only about 1,110. Hmm, interesting. So what, 110 of my views just magically disappeared? We'll have to see. Maybe I'm starting to get treadway, and I'm starting to scare some people. Good, if that's the case. Rightfully so. And please, ladies and gentlemen, too, pay attention to my community page for updates. This Thursday, I will have some special guests. I'm still working out the finer details, but I will keep you updated tomorrow once I get the finer details. But I'll be talking to two fine young ladies who are standing up for this country as we speak. And that's all the information I have right now. That'll be coming at the Krusty Canuck Thursday Fastball, 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, 6 p.m. Eastern. Right, so pay attention to that. That will be live on YouTube and Facebook. Right, so pay attention to that, ladies and gentlemen. And also pay attention to every Sunday, I am part of the Hidden Gem live stream podcast hosted by none other than Adam Daniel Mazze. He usually has a panel of myself, Jenny Walker, Jilly Davis, Valerie Keefe, the major uh, Chris himself, and other guests. So if you like uh, the sound of my voice <laughs> and tolerate my ugly mug, please join us. Uh, for Adam's live stream, the Hidden Gem live stream. He puts on every Sunday at 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time too, 6 p.m. Eastern. We just take uh, different topics of the week and discuss it as openly and as sanely as possible without losing our minds because of uh, the ridiculous leadership that this country has promoted in the past five years, or question be six years now. Anyway, tune into that too. Like I say, pay attention to my community page for updates and all that too. Check out my shop. If you can, please get yourself some Krusty Connect swagger. Summertime is croaching. 
So all the ladies out there who want some new swagger for the beach, please check out the Krusty Connect shop. I've got swimsuits, I've got shorts, I've got tank tops, all that good stuff with the Krusty Connect logo on it. So bring out your inner Baywatch and get yourself a Krusty Connect swimsuit today. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I have been Krusty Canuck on this beautiful 15th of March, 2021. A little bit cooler out here, but the sun is shining. Snow is beginning to melt. Spring is approaching. So I'm getting plans ready for my garden this year. Some better employment, some better mortgage rates are coming. And things are starting to look good. And I hope they're looking good for you too, my listeners. Hope they are. You know, And I want to thank everybody who has given me some kindness uh, the past couple of weeks, nice emails, some great thoughts. Thank you very much. And without you, my listeners, this podcast would not be what it is today. So help me improve it. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at krustycanuck.ca. Like I guess say it's because of you listeners and you find people out there from all over the globe I recently look at my stats on Facebook and I'm having uh, quite a few Eastern Europeans uh, sign in and check out my work. So thank you very much to my Eastern European listeners and the few I've seen in Germany, my Australian listeners, my American listeners and everybody else, especially in, in good old Jolie Britain, even though we're having a man curfew right now. <laughs> I'll save that for another episode, but I, I first read that and I gave myself a chuckle. Oh my God. You know, George Orwell right now is probably just turning in his grave going, what the fuck did I call it or what? Like I said, folks, I've been Krusty Canuck on this beautiful 15th of March, 2021. And like I always say, look after your friends and loved ones. Uh, do what you can to help each other out to the best of your abilities. You know, uh, spring's coming, so be a little more witty about you. And let's keep asking those tough questions. Like I say, harass your politicians. Give them a call. Call them all the time. Talk about this ridiculous spending. Talk about these ridiculous ideas and these laws, especially C7, where they want to sanction government to sanction suicide because if you're feeling unlorn and all that stuff. Slap in the face to my compadres and myself who have uh, overcome mental issues and still struggle with them in some cases. But something to think about. But like I say, look after your friends and loved ones, ladies and gentlemen. Help each other out the best of our abilities. Remember, you know, do what we can. You know, do what we can to help each other out in these trying times. I want to thank uh, my listeners again for being such great people. And uh, I want to thank uh, my wife for tolerating a lot of my uh, BS the past couple of months. But uh, without you, babe, I don't know. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. I don't want to get all mushy and soap, uh, soap opera right now. But uh, anyway, I, w- I want to thank you all for listening and giving me the opportunity to do this. And without you, this wouldn't work. But please keep donating, keep subscribing. And share this all around. Let us independent folk get ahead. Because we all want to get ahead, ladies and gentlemen, by our means. And we can do it. It can be done. So like I say, look after your friends and loved ones, ladies and gentlemen. And remember, humanity and merit wins the day. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Get it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. This has been another episode of the Krusty Canuck Podcast. Stay sane and thank you for listening. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast.